Hi, welcome back to Surger Tip Clips. Today we're going to talk about attaching elastic using your serger. And we're actually going to break this down into two separate tip clips. Today we'll use the elastic foot. And if you've ever heard me um, talk in person or in previous tip clips, you've heard me say that using some of the specialty feet, whether it's on your sewing machine or your serger, is oftentimes the difference between getting pretty good acceptable results versus perfect results. The high engineering that's involved in these specialty feet can make all the difference in the world, and it's fun to know how to use them. So let's get started. Here's the elastic foot. Now, depending on what make or model machine you have, yours may look a little bit different, but it probably has all of the same basic components. So let's talk about those one by one. This big white knob is the tension knob, and that determines how tightly the elastic is going to be pulled as you're gathering your fabric. And if you turn it clockwise, you'll get tighter gathering. Co counterclockwise, you'll get less gathering. So, and how do you know how much to tighten it or loosen it? You have to make a sample. This little section with this little black screw is a guide, and that slides from left to right depending on which needles you're using. You can see there are indicator ridges on this foot, and in a previous tip clip, we talked about the indicator ridges being aligned with the needle positions. So depending on whether you're in cover stitch mode or overlock mode, that will determine where you adjust the um, this little adjustment guide for positioning your elastic so that it stays put. Now, I have found with experience that it's much easier to insert the elastic prior to snapping it on the machine. And I'll show you how to do that. Here's the elastic foot, and let me show you how it opens. It's almost like a little jaw that it will open and close, and you can see this little roller right, right here. And so what you want to do is just slide your elastic in under the roller and over this bottom bar. So let me show you how you do that. I get my elastic in and I cut extra length of elastic so that I have a little bit peeking out from in back of the foot. Let me just pull it along just like that. You can see a little bit peeking out. And then again, depending on which needles you're going to be using, that can adjust your position. And since we're using the overlock needles, these are my indicator ridges for that. And you can see a little bit of space here. So now it's time to adjust that little guide right over to snug it up in there. It's like a little stair step almost. And then just tighten up that screw again. So it's nice and snug. But let me just say one thing about the elastic foot and the nature of elastic. Even though you have this little guide and you think the elastic is going to stay put and stay exactly where you want it, elastic tends to have a mind of its own as it's feeding through. And I find it likes to kind of wander off to the left and kind of angle off. So when we go to the machine, I'm going to show you how I guide it along just very lightly with my left index finger. Here we are at the machine. I have already inserted my elastic because as I said, it's much easier to insert it in the foot off of the machine than on. And I've snapped it onto my machine. And you can see I've got a little bit of um, elastic length already in back of the foot. And I like to do that just to make sure that it feeds smoothly through. I'm set up for a three thread wide overlock stitch. And so I have my left overlock needle in. I have um, my stitch on the widest one possible. I've got my stitch length almost up to four, and my differential feed is on one or N because I'm just doing this on a um, woven fabric. And I've got it with the wrong side of the fabric face up, and I'm just going to scoot that over and kind of let it ride to the left of the um, cutting blade. If the cutting blade takes off a little bit of the fabric, that's fine. Um, but you want to try to avoid um, 
cutting into the elastic itself. And you want to use a cut through sew through elastic, and that is available on my website. It's a knit elastic that won't fray when the needle pierces it or if you cut it down from a wider width. So that's just a little tip about elastic, too. So I'm using my needle like my third hand, as you've seen me do before. I've got that pierced in there. Just make sure everything is in. My foot is down. And I'm going to start stitching along. And as I said, the elastic has a tendency to wander off to the left. So a lot of times I like to use my left index finger as a little guide. And I've got my um, tension down pretty tight on this. I turned it clockwise, just so you can see how I do that. And again, how do you determine that? You're going to experiment. And why do you need a long stitch? Well, you can see as the fabric relaxes, those stitches compress again and are very close to each other. So the longer the stitches, the less thread you're going to have in there. But you don't really have to worry about stretching the elastic. Your elastic foot is doing the work for you. And then once you're off the fabric, you can just lift your foot, which really helps. Pull it out. Pull the elastic out from the foot. Or you can clip it one or the other. And let me just get rid of these threads and show you. Here's the wrong side. So the elastic is on the wrong side. And you can leave it like that if you want to because you've got a finished edge. But here you are from the right side. Beautiful, consistent gathering from beginning to end on that fabric. It's really, really nice. Super easy to do once you get the hang of it and once you know how to set up your elastic foot. Elastic has been surged to the raw edge of the um, skirt or pant top. And so this step is a sewing machine step where you are just going to go to your sewing machine and use either the serpentine stitch or the stretch straight stitch. That's hard to say. And you're going to flip the fabric over to create a casing so that the elastic is concealed. Holding it taut, don't overstretch your fabric, especially if you're working with a knit. It's not as easy to do with a woven. But you're going to hold it straight and just stitch right along through here. And then this is exactly what you'll end up with. And you've got a nice little encased elastic, nice and smooth, very secure. Then the last step would be from pulling on the elastic so hard, either through the elastic foot or manually, whichever technique that you're doing, you're going to want to really give that elastic a good steaming to let it recover back to its original dimension and the one that you wanted. So um, that is the finishing touch on that is to give it a very, very good steaming all the way around. And, um, you'll see that elastic dimension shrink back to its original size. This is done with the uh, stretch straight stitch, which is like a very tiny little zigzag. There's lots of stretch in it. And that's a great stitch to use uh, if you've got knits too. Or another choice might be, if you have it on your machine, a serpentine stitch just like this. And again, plenty of stretch on that as well. And it's kind of pretty too. So there you have the elastic foot on your serger. Up next, I'll show you the quartering method without the elastic foot. See you soon.